Good morning and God bless each and every one of you. We're delighted to have you with us. Maybe this is your very first time tuning in and joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. Um, we want to pray for our nation and our world that is in oblique, oppressive darkness. We also want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church or you pray for your pastor and your local congregation. And then lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world. Maybe you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for our nation and our world. We pray for a great and effectual door of utterance to be opened up to the church worldwide. I also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. Pray that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor and blessing upon this congregation. And lastly, our brothers and sisters around the world, you'd furnish each and every one of them with a hedge of protection. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. James chapter number five. James chapter number five. Look at verse number 10. This is where we want to start. Take my, brev my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Reading this this morning, this just like, it was just pronounced. It just kind of jumped out at me. Look at verse number 11. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. For the next several mornings, I want to do a two-part on enduring. And the first part, I want to talk about the anatomy of enduring. And then tomorrow I want to talk about the autopsy of a failed endurance. So I entitled this one, The Anatomy of of enduring because um, I wouldn't feel right talking about the autopsy of, of endurance because the autopsy is something that you perform, is something that is performed on um, some living creature, human being or otherwise, that is now deceased. And you do an autopsy. It's, it's, it's an in investigation. So we'll save that for tomorrow. This, we are talking about, we count it happy, those that endure. That just, that just means something. And make no mistake about it. When you talk about people that are saved, and I'm going to qualify this. We all know this, but I'm doing this just for the sake of definition. People that have repented of their sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and living a godly, overcoming life. There are some other factors that 
are there when we get it to when we all arrive at the finish line that there are going to be some other factors and one of them that is preeminent is to endure the bible says in matthew chapter 24 where jesus is talking about uh, eschatology in fact in all the synoptic accounts it is by far, Matthew chapter 24 is uh, the most illustrative and the most descriptive of all the other accounts. And Jesus said that the love of many shall wax cold, but they that endure until the end shall be saved. So there has to be this element. It has to be more than our spiritual birthright. There has to be some other factors that are involved. And chiefly, to endure. In the New Testament, this is, this is central to our walk with God. The Bible, as it talks about here in James chapter 5, but also talks about in 2 Thessalonians, where it talks about enduring affliction. Um, Paul, writing to Timothy, talks about enduring hardness. The book of Hebrews, chapter number 12, talks about if ye endure chastening or chastisement. So, enduring is all part of a healthy apostolic life. But what does it really mean to endure? What does this word mean to endure? It means to hold up, to bear up. It literally means to carry. It literally means that you, you are coexisting in your, in your bearing things or forbearing things or carrying things, that you are coexisting with situations or evil, even people that are imperfect and situations that are imperfect and maybe even a relationship that is not perfect. But you have made up your mind. You have already settled it in your heart. I am going to be a child of God, a Christian, in this particular situation, in every situation, but in one where there's the evidence of affliction or where you're having to endure something that is not perfect, it is not right, it is, it is, it is something that is a bother to you. But you are continuing in the face of affliction or imperfection to keep walking. So I want to talk about the anatomy, the components, because I really believe that genuine enduring, this, this, this biblical word to endure, I believe that it has to have some components to genuinely make it what it is. First and foremost, I believe there has to be faith. Because in the face of obstacles and affliction and situations that are unpleasant, there has to be a faith that is rock solid, that is determined, that is immovable and unshakable. There has to be a faith in God. But I believe it's more than just a faith in God. I believe that it's a faith in the promises of God. I believe it is a faith in the word of God. I believe it is a faith that this too shall pass and that weeping may endure for a night, that things are just for a season or for this life or um, for a chapter or for a day or a night. 
but joy is going to come in the morning. There has to be a faith that is unshakable in the things of God. Number two, there has to be a deep, deep, deep love for God. The Bible talks about in the book of Romans chapter number five that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, but it is, I'm talking about a love that is so deeply founded and so it has, it has, it has shaped my thought life. It has um, shaped my introspection of my self-evaluation and my evaluation of others. And, and yes, we all deal with a certain level of carnality, but but in the end, the love of God is going to triumph, and and I'm gonna I'm gonna think I'm gonna think on these things, and I'm going to believe the best and hope the best. The love of God. These we're talking about compon- components of endurance. What is it in a person? You can have two people in a congregation that that they both got saved in the exact same revival or they both are second generation or whatever preconditions. And and this person sits over here on this side of the church and this person sits on this side of the church and they both go through situations and they are both afflicted and they both are going through trials and tribulations. And this person gets stronger and this person becomes an overcomer and this person, maybe even failure. Maybe, maybe they both experience a certain level of failure. And this, this person uh, accepts the responsibility that are attached to those things. And they, they experience forgiveness and they pick themselves back up and they continue to go on. They endure in the face of every lion devil. But this person over here, trial, tribulation, and they just, they just, they don't endure. What is it in that? We'll talk about this person tomorrow. This person right here, what is it? There is a heaven. There is a heaven to gain. This is all part of this component of of endurance. If we could take endurance and stick it uh, in a Petri dish and and then break it down and look at it um, through a microscope and see these different components that make endurance what it is. There is a faith that what the Bible says is that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And there is a love of God. I, at the end of the day, I love God and I know God loves me and, and that is unshakable. And I might be, I might do stupid things. I might say things I'm, I regret. I might have actions that are less than what I think they should be, but God is a forgiver and I accept that forgiveness. There has to be all that, okay? Lastly, there has to be a prayer life. There has to be where, because all of us are meeting these challenges head on, whether it is affliction or whether it is enduring hardness or whether it is... um, enduring chastisement. There has to be somewhere where I bring it all down and I'm able, I'm able to process it all and say, I'm going to keep going. I'm receiving strength from God. I'm, I'm receiving strength from my relationship with God. I'm receiving strength from the Word of God. There has to be a prayer life. There might be some other factors and components um, that you're thinking, hey, pastor, I saw that and I liked it, but you, you forgot about this. There might be several other, but the three main components in the anatomy of endurance, when the love of many shall wax cold and I'm being chastised by God and I don't like it, or uh, I'm, in, I'm enduring affliction and I'm enduring hardness and I'm enduring false accusation and I'm this and that and this, family members and friends and whatever the case may be. Faith, the love of God and a deep 
consecration that's founded with prayer, relationship that's founded by prayer. This is what I would call the anatomy that makes endurance what it is. What, what makes one person where they're able to, to carry certain things and keep walking and go through things and keep walking, whether it's, whether it's you're carrying a huge weight or you're carrying a huge failure, but you continue to keep walking in the face of every lying devil that's wanting you to fall and fail and give up and expire and walk away. Faith, the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts, and prayer. I hope this has been a blessing to you. They that endure till the end shall be saved. Faith, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Prayer. God bless you. Hope you've enjoyed this today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.